Welcome everyone back to Fun with WebGL 2.0. Uh, to start with, we're going to refactor some of our code and try to animate our vertices that we created in the last lesson. So we're going to begin by taking all our shader steps and making a single function out of it. And we're going to put this in our shader utility class. This reduces loading a shader into a single line of code, which will make it easier for us in the long term. Now back at our shader utility class, this is how our DOM shader program is going to look like. You see everything has been slimmed down quite a bit and I added if statements for every step of the way because we want to verify that every step is successful. There's no point in trying to create a shader or do any kind of linking if for some reason the DOM was not found or there's no text in it. Now back at our HTML page, we're going to go back to the top of the JS and to save time, we're going to add all the global variables we're going to need for this lesson. One of our global variables is viewpoint size location, which was originally a local variable in our load event. So we've got to fix that up so we can initialize it as a global instead of local. Next up, we're going to refactor our buffer code. So this way, again, we can just initialize everything very quickly with one or two lines of code. So what we see here is I got rid of the second vertice from our array, and we have a new function that we're going to add to our GL context, which we're calling it create array buffer. And this time around, instead of hard coding our vertice count, we're going to calculate it. We're going to get the length and divide by 3 because each vert vertex is 3 floats long. And for to end it, at the end, our draw arrays, we're going to put our vertical count. Now back at the gl.js file, we're going to create a new function called create array buffer. Uh, in this function, we pass in our array, and then we pass in is this static. Um, we have an if statement that checks to see if it's undefined, so this way we can call the function with just the array and not bother setting is static, because most of the time it's going to be static, so to make things a little easier, it's kind of a, a way to set up a default value for uh, an argument. And if you notice, a lot of the GL references have been replaced with this, because now this function exists in the GL context. So all the GL references are now this, that reference. Now we're going to move on by making some new code. We're going to make a new file called renderloop.js. This new class is going to handle a lot of our animations. Um, this is where we get to do our frame per frame uh, code and then drawing. Um, there's a lot going on in this th in this class, so there's like lots of comments that really explains to it. Uh, just a quick overview. It just allows you, there's two ways to handle it. Uh, we can pass in uh, frames per second, which would then create a run function, which would then limit how fast our animations will go. And then we, with, without it, you, it'll just run as fast as it possibly can. It all depends on the callback function you pass in. Uh, the callback function is kind of like a delegate in other languages like C-sharp, and it just calls it over and over again. And based on what's in it, it really depends how fast the frame rate's going to be. You know, if you're doing a lot of mathematics and a lot of heavy drawing, then it's going to be slow. If you're doing something very simple, it's going to be very fast. Um, and the other thing this thing will help us create is delta time. Delta time is very useful to create animations that are frame rate depend independent. Um, you'll see this later on in the lesson and how we use uh, delta time to do some animations. So now when we go back to our HTML page, we're going to add our render loop.js file. Now we scroll down to where we do all our drawing. Now, now we're going to start rewriting this into our render loop. So we're going to create our unrender function and it's going to have a parameter called delta time. For now we're just going to call it dt. Since we're not doing a, using a lot of shaders or a lot of um, things, we can keep a lot of our stuff in the initialization, like we can still keep use program and uh, binding or buffers. Um, when we're dealing with multiple shaders, multiple objects, a lot of this stuff will actually will exist on the render cl uh, function or callback because you know you can only run one shader at a time so we're gonna have to constantly switch shaders and switch uh, models and meshes you know one after another with in our render loop so the only thing we're gonna move into our render loop is setting the uniform of viewpoint size location which is the reason why we have it set for global and we're gonna copy over our draw arrays which also uses gvert count which is another global variable 
And uh, you'll notice that before we draw, we are actually going to clear. Because if you don't clear, you'll keep the previous frame there. So if you want, for fun, just r start rendering without uh, the clear function. And to finish it off, uh, we replace the draw arrays in our uh, load event with our loop, which creates the render loop. Uh, we pass in the function that we want to actually call for every uh, frame. And then it's a chainable thing, so we use the start function to just start the loop right away. So once you save all the changes and we go back to the browser, you'll see that everything should be running just fine and you should see one vertice being rendered over and over and over again. And again, if you want, just have fun and unclear it and see what happens. Now that we're done setting everything up, let's have some fun in animating. So we're going to go back to our HTML page and we're going to add some things to our on render. One of the things we're going to do is start adding some variables globally. Uh, we have point size and point size step. Point size is just the current size of the point per at the at the frame. And for every frame, how much are we going to change? And we're going to change it by the step which we set for three. Then on render, we have the point size being added to with point step times delta time. Uh, delta time at this point is a number that's usually less than one because we're hopefully you're, you're not going one frame per second so it, it's a it's like a fraction so it makes the animation frame rate independent so after after one second we should step by three so at this current frame for going a fraction of a second we want to go a fraction of three so that's what we're doing in that line of code and then the next part we're taking that size and we're adding it to sine. And sine gives you a number between negative 1 and 1. Uh, it's usually just pass in like an angle or something, but right now we're just, just passing in uh, a float that's being incremented at per frame. So it gives us a number between negative 1 and 1. And we're multiplying that number by 10 and then adding 30. So the, we're multiplying by 10 because the sine is going to change 10 into a number between 10 and minus 10. And then we're going to add like a center. A center is, or a center size, or a starting size is 30. So technically, the, the way this is, these two lines of code are doing is we're going to pulsate the size of the pixel, or the vertex, between uh, 20 and 40, where 30 is the center, and sine and 10 actually does the back and forth. And then uh, with all that set up, we pass the value to the, f the shader, we clear it, and we draw it. And if you go back to the browser, you should see it pulsating uh, between 20 and 40 uh, point size. So voila, you're finally animating in WebGL. Congratulations. And let's, let's do more. Let's, it's, instead of just pulsating, let's make this little guy move. Let's, he's, he's our soldier, and we want him to start patrolling our canvas. So in the HTML page, we're going to start adding some extra stuff. So we got an angle, angle step, which we're going to start making the pixel walk around in a circle. And as you can see, I messed up the code a little bit where I have this angle step going at 90 degrees per step, but I comped it as 30 degrees. Um, so just ignore the comment on that one. It's really 90 degrees instead of 30. So I'm just converting 90 degrees to radians because sine wave needs uh, angles in radians. So in our render function, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to increment our angle by our step, but using delta time. So this way, for every uh, second of animation, we should be going about 90 degrees of rotation. And then we pass it, just like we did with point size, uh, through a uniform, we clear, and then we draw. Of course, none of this is going to work unless we start updating our shaders first. So we're going to go back and we're going to art update our vet vertex shader. So one of the first things we're going to change is add our U angle uniform. So this is where we're going to pass in the angle. Next, we're going to actually change how we calculate the position. 
So instead of just putting in the position that we press pass in, we're going to actually modify the position. So to start off with, any position is a, is a vector for. It has x, y, z, and a w. w only exists for matrix uh, multiplications, so you don't have to worry about it. it just set it to 1.0 all the time. Um, so we're going to actually change how x works. So with x, we're going to get the cosine of the angle times the radius, which is 0.8. To remember that the, um, the canvas from the center can only go as far as 1 because it's resolution independent. So to get very close to the edge, we're going to have to get very close to 1. So the radius is 1. And then so we take the angle at the radius and we add it to x. And we do the same thing with y. Uh, this We're using x and y at the origin because we have x and y set to 0. So And then after that, we just add in the, the z position that we passed in and add uh, the y value, or the w value, I should say, sorry. So that's what we're doing. At this point, now we're changing the position based on angle, and the radius is just 0.8. You can go and mess around with the radius and change it and whatnot, and for personal fun, you should go out and maybe make a uniform. So this way you can change the radius, and maybe you can animate the radius yourself. Just got to remember, the radius will only work if it's between 0 and 1. And don't forget, you should also change the x and y position that you're passing in. So this way you can change the center point of where it rotates from. Now with the shader all done with, now we have to do one last step. Now that we have the U angle uniform, we need to get its location. So if we scroll back up to our load event and go to the step 4 of our shader, all we're going to do is just get the location of U angle. And that's it. And now if you go back to your browser, you will see that the, your vertex is pulsating and rotating around and around and around nonstop, patrolling our canvas looking for things to kill or maim or whatever you want your game to do at some point in the future. Uh, who knows, maybe down the line we can build this up into a game engine. You know, it all starts with a vertex running around and then soon enough it'll be uh, a character bouncing around, climbing, jumping, doing wacky things, whatever you can imagine. So, sky's the limit once you understand how it all works. So I guess we'll end it here. Uh, we managed to accomplish quite a bit. I'm going to start putting all the source code up on GitHub so you guys don't have to type a lot of this out. And um, you could just download and just try it out and tweak it and have fun with it. So if you can, just uh, like and subscribe and uh, see you guys at the next lesson.